Okay, so I'm going to try to graph this ellipse. This is an ellipse because we have an x squared and a y squared. First thing you want to recognize is when you have x squared and y squared, you have an ellipse. Okay, that's not absolutely true. Let me clarify that. If they're both the same sign, if they're both the same sign, positive, both positive, or both negative on the x squared and y squared, and the coefficients, 9 and 16 in this case, are different, that guarantees we have an ellipse. If the coefficients are the same circle, if there's a positive and a negative, I look at it as they're running away from each other. So instead of an ellipse coming together, it's an hyperbola running away. Okay, This is an ellipse because of the different coefficients, both x squared, y squared, and both the same sign. It's not in standard form. We want this equal to 1 to put it in standard form. I'm shooting to get this in the x minus h squared over a squared, y minus k squared over b squared. Again, some books switch the a and b depending on the length of the, the, the longer, the major axis length, okay, whether it's more horizontal or vertical. Okay, I'm not concerned with that because I'll show you a way around that one. Complete the square. Here's your review. I'm sorry to say this is review if you've made it this far. Review of completing the square. I first need to factor out and reorganize. I'm going to reorganize first. Okay, the entire equation, I need to factor out any a term, any leading coefficient on x squared or y squared. Okay, any leading coefficient, I need you guys to um, factor those out. But you need to factor them out of the first two terms. So I line up the first two terms on both of these. Okay, y squared and x squared. And there's the y squared and the y term. The 47, I usually tell to get out of my way. So a nice easy algebra method is to add 47. So I'm going to add 47 and put the 47 on the other side. Second step, because sometimes I, I like to put a, a little space inside the uh, completing the square technique here to remind me to adjust this equation at the end. And I'll show you what I mean. First, factoring out the 9. 9x squared coming out of the 54, 6. 6x, it's always nice to get an even number there, so smile. Because when it's an odd number, we go down fraction world, it gets a little tricky. So 6x, and then I like to put the little box there. A couple things, I'm completing a square, and I'm putting a square up there, so I feel like it's normal. But that's not where I'm really completing the square. This is the completed square right here. This is the completed square we're shooting for. So that's, the, uh, that's where I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to get to here. So here's my trick, half of B, half of B goes there, X plus 3. Then square that term to figure out what you've added. And in this case, a 9. Now be careful, the last step is to adjust. The last step is to adjust. It's not just a 9 we needed in this equation. It's an 81, exactly. you got to fact. you got to recognize the 9 times on the outside. Thanks for that. That's perfect. And, and, and that's the key, is that you need to add what you've added on this side. you got to add to the other side. Now, do the other one, 16. 16 comes out of y squared and 32y. Okay, as a negative 2y, I put a little box there to remind me. It's just my little trick to help me. Okay, half of b, bring down the plus sign, half of b, y minus 1, quantity squared. The square of that is 1. The square of that is 1, but I'm not really just adding a 1. What am I adding? 16, 16 times 1. Excellent. So you got to realize that I'm distributing that 16 over to there, and technically I am adding a 16. Now when you take the whole other side, when you take the other side, you got 47, 81, and 16, 97, 144. Thank you. Awesome. 144. Still not in standard form. Last step, divide by the 144 on all three locations here. After you do that, see anything that cancels? 9 and 144 have something in common. You know what it is? Is it 16? Yep, 16. So that leaves this, oops, excuse me, not up there. It doesn't leave the 16 up there. It leaves the 16 down here. It leaves the 16 down here. 40, 144 is 9 times 16. I'm canceling the 9s or making a 1 out of the 9, as I often say. Vice versa, 
leaves a nine there. Finally, I have this a build. Now I can graph this. Now I can graph this and find all the key information. And find all the key information. So here's the graphing. Here's the graphing. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put. Let me get a quickly get a uh, an image out real quick. My gallery. Hang on. My pictures. Whoops. Oh, let me just find it the old way. Hang on. It's going to be here. Boom, boom. Usually a couple down, and I'll find my XY grid. Should have had that up ready to go. I apologize. Oh, I can't find my XY grid. I'm losing it. Okay. Shh. Back to attention over here, please. Some of you may, I graded some of these, uh, some of the hype. Um, some of the parabola work we did recently, and there's some small mistakes with the foci that I see us making. So I want to be sure that we get this right. I want to be sure we get this right. After completing the square, I now need to graph this. What makes zero? What makes zero? There's the center. Negative three, negative three, and positive one. So I mark the center there. Okay, I have an under the x displaced square root of 16, four. Four left, four right. One, two, three, four left. One, two, three, four, right. So my vertices, which are part of the ones that I need to answer, are along this axis because this is the bigger number, the elongated part. Okay? So part of the answer that we need to record should record it right now that our vertices are at left, let's see, three, four more, seven, negative seven, one, and at one, one. So that's the first part of the answer. Everybody go ahead and check your homework before you hand this one in. It would be a good idea. Okay? It is displaced three up and three down. No, it wanted you to, it, it's, it, it, I prefer to graph it before I answer any vertices or foci questions or getting the, the focus points. I prefer to graph it because then I can make my right triangle and I find it a lot easier. You easily could have followed the formulas in the book and honestly not understood a single thing and produced answers. Okay, I'm trying to fight that urge. So if this is my scratch work, so be it. The graph is my scratch work. Okay, here's the general idea of the curve. Looks a little bit like Stewie's head. Looks a little bit like Stewie's head there. And how do I get the, the foci? Um, the, the focus point's got to be about there. So what I usually do is I put about where it is, draw the line. The distance I need to get is center to focus. So I draw that line, complete the right triangle with the other vertex, Recognize the hypotenuse. This is the key thing you got to remember. The hypotenuse is the length uh, out to the distance, out to the from center to vertex, which we already know has a display from there of a displacement of four. So this length is four. This length is three. What do we got? 16 minus nine, root five. So this is root five. So the focus is located at the center left root five. 1 minus root 5, okay, comma, okay, and technically I can list both of them at the same time because it's 1 minus root 5 and it's 1 plus root 5. So what I'll do is I'll go plus or minus, so that's two x coordinates I'm given there, and then the height of it's still the same, it's at 1. So there's how you get the focus of 28. That is the final part except for the eccentricity. The eccentricity, which will should be closer to 0 because it's more circular, so I'm not expecting a number that's close to 1, which would be more uh, flat. So the eccentricity, simple way to think of it. The length, the length of, hey, if I made a mistake, hang on one second. So the length out to here, the length out to there, that's center to vertex. Center to vertex, that's the divisor. That's the divisor. So I'm going to put 4 down here, okay? And then the length from uh, center to uh, the, excuse me, the, um, the length from center to focus is root 5. So that's technically what I get for the eccentricity on this problem. Okay? Huh? Doesn't it make a 3 plus Well, here, let's go ahead and pause this and take a Thanks to my wonderful students, they caught two of my mistakes. First of all, I did Pythagoras wrong. That's supposed to be a root 7 there. It's supposed to be a root 7, so let's go ahead and erase that. And, my, uh, and another student pointed out that I didn't grab the center x coordinate. Good two catches. That's why sometimes it's nice to have do this in front of people. Dave. You help me catch it. Negative three. 
plus or minus root 7. Then down here, the eccentricity is root 7. Okay, root 7 over 4. That should be how to do every part of that problem. You got complete the square in there. You got graph, even if it's just scratch work for this problem. Tells you how to get the foci, the eccentricity, and the vertex. Thank you.